Smith, uh, you know, again, the text was just released, as you pointed out quite eloquently. Do you have any clear idea of what the real cost of this is? I mean, all the numbers we get thrown around are, you know, kind of from press reports or whatever. Uh, I mean, how much revenue is budget committee purview? How much cost? And do you have a clear idea of what's in it? Well, uh, thank you, Ranking Member Cole. You know, we're trying to, uh, my team and I are trying to put things together as quickly as possible. Um, of course, the Congressional Budget Office is now probably trying to look through this bill. But I will tell you from our quick readout very quickly is over a 10-year window. This is the scorekeepers on the Budget Committee, our team. We project uh, based as you're talking about very cliff notes. Um, that this bill is $4.6 trillion over 10 years, um, and uh, basically $1.6 trillion in offsets, and it'll add $3 trillion to the deficit, is what our early readout is in regards to this. What I think is very interesting, Ranking Member Cole, since values has been discussed so often on this committee, I think it's very important to see where the values have changed from the bill that passed out of the Budget Committee a month ago to the bill that's today. Of course, the climate provisions look like they have remained permanent. However, the child tax credit in the original bill was there until the year 2025. But in this proposal, they believe children should only have that up until the year 2022. So that's a value that um, this bill changes from the last bill, is that the children tax credit was in the bill that passed out of budget, extended until the year 2025, this bill only extended to the year 2022, so one year, one year. And there's also some other provisions like that, Ranking Member Cole. For example, the um, earned income tax credit in the original bill that was passed out of the Budget Committee, it, uh, it was previously made permanent by the House Democrats. However, in this one, they only extended it for a year. So they no longer allow the earned income tax credit to be permanent. They're only making it one year to expire in the year 2022. And then you look at the Affordable Care Act subsidies. In the original underlining bill, they made it permanent. You know, health care subsidies, they've always talked about expansion. In the underlining bill, they made it permanent. Yet, you know, once again, they made it expire in the year 2025, is from my early readout. And so maybe they like filed this bill like a an hour before this committee, but I have a really good team and we're really trying to go through it pretty quick. Um, and we're gonna make sure the American people knows the values of, of the Democrats that's within this committee. But um, I would like to point out, we're still trying to figure out if um, there's any changes to the state and local income tax. I believe that there are, and I would just like for the American public and for the committee to be quite well aware, for every year that you extend, the state and local income tax, the state and local tax, it's $91 billion, 91 billion. And that helps the top one percenters, the top one percenters that would roughly get about $35,000 a year in added benefit. However, you know what you could do with that $91 billion? You could extend these following programs that they say are their values and that they care about for an additional year. Let me read the programs to your ranking member, Cole. Free college, you could do that. Plus, you could do long-term care. Plus, you could do the child care credits. Plus, you could do the paid family leave. Plus, you could do the Affordable Care Act um, ex expansion. Plus, you could do another year of the earned income tax credit. I just want to put, since we're talking values, the Democrat bill in here decided to expand the state and local tax, which is a tax break for the one percenters, instead of doing another year for the six items that they try to say that they're doing for the working class. So I just think that that's important and easy readout. The chairman's asked me to yield. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, are you in favor of all those uh, programs? I mean, because, I mean, because, I, 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 you know, we're in a negotiation with the Senate, and unfortunately, uh, you know, we have to come down on some of these things because of negotiation. 
But if the gentleman's in favor of all those things, I, I, I want to say something nice about him. But I think what the gentleman is... You can is, still say something nice I think what the gentleman him. is basically <laughs> you know. doing is, is basically, you know, you, know, you know, complaining that these programs are, are, uh, are, are not funded in a permanent way, and yet the gentleman, um, if he had his way, would fund none of them. So, I mean, let's talk about values here. We, 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 we do not share the same values. I, I thank the gentleman for I, I certainly will. Ranking I'll member, allow my I, friend to respond, respond, and then I have a quick observation to make. I here. would respond to that. I would hate for the chairman of this committee to try to speak for me um, uh, and to decide what my values are. The people who elect me in southeast Missouri know who my values are, and we fight for them, and that's why I'm fighting to save America and to stop this piece of legislation that's trying to get more command and control <laughs> over their lives and livelihoods. Because oh. like, like the lady uh, uh, from North Carolina said earlier, is that we may have different values. We do. We, we may have different values. But, but my values is, is that I don't want government government to control the people who I represent. We believe in freedom. We believe in choice. We believe in choice and that government doesn't force it and push it down upon us. Yeah. And we don't believe the federal government knows what's best for, for our own healthcare decisions, what's best for our own education decisions, what's best for our own privacy and freedom. So the values are different and that's okay. That's why the good people of Southeast Missouri decided to send me up here. Um, but I just wanted to state if values I just want to state how it's changed because my counterpart did not express this, and I just think it's important to point well, out well, how. It's let changed. me ask you this, um, because I would I'd look at it a way that that uh, there's a bit of a a smokescreen here in the sense to make the the bill look a lot cheaper than it probably really is, uh, because that's you know partly what you do that, and and it's a little bit of political chicken, you know, what we dare you uh, to take it or find a way to fund it, uh, so. Uh, I'm very curious as to how people on the in the other chamber in the Democratic Party will look on that, because uh, I suspect they'll see the same thing. Um, at least I hope they would, because again, I think that's that's the aim here. Let's artificially lower this to some number so we can say what is really a multi-trillion-dollar bill, as you suggest, uh, is really less than two trillion dollars. It's a lot more than that, uh, and that's that's just the reality of it. Um, I, let me ask you this. Um, you have considerable experience with the Congressional Budget Office. Uh, how long do you think it'll take them to score a document like this? Because we're, you know, if my friends on the other side can succeed in their timetable, I suspect we will be voting before we ever get an official score at all. Is that a fair assumption? Uh, without a doubt, less than 10 percent of the bill that was passed a month ago out of the Budget Committee has been scored by the Congressional Budget Office. Uh, so it, it will definitely take considerable time. And uh, I, I doubt if the leadership of this chamber will wait for a score before they have a vote if they have enough members in their party to support it. Okay, thank you. 